Now, uh, my guest in this hour is Ellie James. She's had to tackle years of feeling embarrassed, ashamed, confused and completely self-conscious. Because uh, she lives in South Oxfordshire, she's one of only a handful of people in Britain to suffer from something that I don't even know if I can pronounce, but I'm giving it a go. Trimethylaminuria, T-M-A-U. This is a syndrome which causes her to smell, literally. In her own words, she smells sometimes of rotten garbage or sewage, no matter how much she washes. Well, Ellie is now working to educate people about the condition, which is one of the reasons she's now prepared to sort of come out in the media about it and talk to people. And she joins us from our studio in London. Hello there, Ellie. Hi, Anne. Hello. Um, I, I, you must have so welcomed the moment that you actually got a diagnosis because until then you didn't know what the heck was happening to you, did you? No, no, I didn't have a clue. Um, as you said, no matter you know how much I washed and it was bad and you know getting bad reactions from people and being aware of it myself, the moment of diagnosis was hooray. I mean, it was a bit of a life sentence, but it was also now I can start to do things about it. I know what I'm dealing with. Until then, I mean, it started, I think, um, as far as you've said, but you, you've got the feeling that your office was getting a bit smelly. It was, there, was, there was a smell of ammonia. Yeah, and I couldn't, couldn't work it out. Um, and I, I thought, I'm not near the lavatories. It can't be that. I just couldn't work it out. And I didn't think it was me at the time. Well, obviously, it was. Um, well, no, you wouldn't think it was you because you, you would know that you're a hygienic person and there would be no yes. reason that it would be you. No, no. So it came as a complete shock when it eventually dawned on me much later on that actually it was me. And and this, this I mean, that must have been truly upsetting. But of course, at the same time that you were gradually realising there was a problem, so were your colleagues. Um, and some of them yeah. were pretty unkind. Uh, yeah, Secret Santa, it became expected i just began to expect it would be body wash it would be bath products it would be perfume there was no variation and there'd always be the knowing looks and the sniggers and uh people would make jokes i remember one um one year we were going on a work trip to bath to look at some buildings there and um as soon as someone mentioned the word bath um, general hilarity and I knew what they were laughing about because by then I obviously knew I had a problem although I didn't know what it was and how do you deal with that every I don't day know. it's That's really horrible. hard you yeah. must have gone to the doctor um, I did I went I went to quite a few doctors um, but the problem is and and problem that people who have TMAU are still finding is that it's so rare that it's not part of um, the normal medical practice gps very rarely see patients with this and in fact one of the leading specialists in the country only has 30 patients and they come from pretty much all over the uk so it is very rare so going to a gp at first didn't help because he hadn't heard of he just it didn't know. He, no he just what did they tell, of, did they tell you to do anything did they recommend he, anything he uh was as helpful as he could be um but that was really educating me on how to wash and well they actually were telling I you already knew as though that. you didn't know how to yeah. wash properly yeah. yeah well there seemed no other obvious explanation no exactly and so you go on with this mystery and i know you went through a period of scrubbing yourself so hard you almost bled um mm. and using strong smelling soaps and you know um, yeah. and disinfectant yeah which is so which hard on your skin and actually in some cases awful. was probably making the problem worse Yes, it would have been because one of the uh, problems with TMAU is when it is excreted through your pores um, and it is excreted uh, by your liver and your gut through all your pores, through your breath, through your hair, it crystallises on the skin um, and at, at body temperature they turn into a gas. So you, you're literally gassing people. Um, and most of these products that I was using are the wrong pH. They're too high. What you need is a very low pH because it almost neutralises the crystals so that they don't turn into gas or they don't do it as quickly. I mean, just so hearing you, you say that shows how you have had to come off. to terms with it almost scientifically as well. My guest this afternoon, Ellie James, who, as I was saying, had to tackle years of feeling so embarrassed but very confused um, about the condition she was suffering from, which in the end was diagnosed as trimethylaminuria, T-M-A-U. 
thankfully a very rare syndrome which causes basically her to smell of really horrible things. I mean, she describes it herself as rotten garbage or sewage sometimes. Ellie, since you had the, um, the diagnosis, what were they able to do to you? I mean, have they been able to treat you? Um, it's not treatment as such because there's no cure for it. It's more of a protocol that you follow, which is um, in two parts. One is certain types of medication and or supplements and altering your diet and it's successful to varying degrees but it does make a difference to the smell i mean is it genetic there are two types um tmau1 is genetic and people with that are born with it um but there's type 2 which i have which is acquired uh which it's not quite understood how that happens, but it, it can happen through damage to the liver or other endocrine organs. And in my case, uh, my endocrinologist suspects it's uh, from about 14 years ago and I was on a very aggressive course of antibiotics. He thinks it may have altered things metabolically so that the enzyme, the FMO3 enzyme that breaks down the compounds that I can't cope with, stopped working ah. because of the antibiotics. So we would all suffer from this if we didn't have this special enzyme that breaks it down. Yes. You have not got this enzyme. No, or I've got an enzyme that doesn't work properly. It might work sometimes, because most people that have this, even if it's type 1, it can be transient. At some times, you don't have an odour at all, um, but most of the time you will have an odour of some sort. And what uh, does anything change the odour? What you eat, what you drink, anything like that change Yes, Yes, that, that's very obvious. I mean, the main way of controlling it is diet. Yeah. If you eat meat is very bad, for example, beef, um, liver... Um, bacon, egg yolk, very bad. Um, fish, extremely bad, which is where it gets the name fish odour syndrome from mm. because the compound that smells is trimethylamine, which actually smells like rotten fish. Um, that's the actual compound that if you, you know, put a fish in a bin um, and let it rot, that's the, the actual Ooh. smell is the trimethylamine. Um, so cutting those things out and cutting out things like coffee, um, which is a big one, Beans, alcohol, sugar, cu cutting those things out helps. Oh, crumbs. Well, what are you left with? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I suppose, I, uh, it, I mean, that's worth it, isn't it, way, isn't it? Because um, it, it must have had such an effect on your lifestyle. It did. I, I became a recluse for a while and didn't really want to do anything. And, and I had had such an active life. Um, but when I realised I could do things through diet... Um, I did because I, I don't want to be defined by the condition and I don't want it stopping me from doing things. I, I don't do some things, like I find it very difficult to sit in a cinema for three hours mm. just in case. I find that quite hard. Yes, because even if you're not giving off an odour, you must be worried that you are. I'm worried that I am. Yeah. That worry doesn't go away. But the thing with the diet is, like, I, I cut out almost everything except a handful of fruit and I lost too much weight. I'm quite tall and I went down to seven stone. It wasn't healthy. Mm. Um, so it's finding a balance between the things that are low in choline, which is a precursor to trimethylamine, which it, choline is also something you can't cope with, which is found in all proteins um, and most foods. So a typical Find diet, like, I mean, what are you eating today, for instance? Um, well, today I've had, for breakfast, I had a couple of apples and some gluten-free porridge. I'm okay with oats, but yeah. some grapes brains are bad. Um, I haven't had lunch yet, but I'm probably going to have a, a bowl of vegetable soup. But I need to be careful what veggies I put in because there's some types of vegetables that are high in choline as well. So it's making sure you know what's high and what's low. But also the human body needs um, a minimum amount of choline yes. every day for proper neurological functions. So you're constantly so. having to balance things out. Yeah, constantly. But you get used to it. I mean, a lot of people would say you're very brave to even be coming on the radio and talking about it. On the other hand, the more people know about it, at least they're going to be more forgiving and understanding. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, it, it was difficult speaking about it the first few times I did, like the first few times I took people aside. But my view is it people are cruel because of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Once they know it's a medical condition, you can't help it. They are actually very supportive. And it's like, like any hidden disability. Um, if people don't know about it... Um, 
bad behaviour can result. Yes. So it's, oh, yes. it's being tolerant of other people's behaviours and conditions and educating people. And this is an opportunity for me to help other people, both those who have it and those who don't have it. To and how many people it. do we think do have it? Um, it's it's very rare. I don't know exact figures. It's thought 1% of the UK population carry um, at least one of, one of the pairs of genes. Um, but far, far fewer than those will present with symptoms. Um, the, the, the UK, the leading expert in it, there's, there's a couple around the country, but there aren't many, only has 30 patients. Gosh. Um, but that may partly be because many people with, have, with it go undiagnosed. Exactly, yes, and are probably living rotten lives because of it too. Yes. Ellie, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on and telling us about it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Have a me. great day. Thank you. You too. Bye.